The Bank of England raised rates Thursday for the fifth time since December. Its benchmark rate went up by a quarter of a percentage point to 1.25%, its highest level since early 2009. Some analysts had expected more, following a three-quarter percentage point increase by the US Federal Reserve the day before. Instead, the BOE stuck to a gradual approach, but warned that it was ready to act forcefully to stamp out inflation. Central banks around the world are racing to cool price rises. In the UK, they are forecast to exceed 10% later this year, partly thanks to soaring energy costs. Last month, Bank Governor Andrew Bailey said consumers needed to brace for impact. I'm afraid the one that I am going to sound, I guess, rather apocalyptic about is food. But Bailey has to tread carefully, with policymakers also worried about triggering a recession. The UK economy is already showing signs of a slowdown and is forecast to be among the weakest of rich countries next year. Even so, traders bet that more rate hikes are on the way. Markets are pricing in a rate of almost 3% as soon as December. Earlier Thursday, the Swiss National Bank shocked markets with its first rate hike since 2007. Stocks tumbled following the news. Analysts said it was telling that one of the most dovish of central banks was now worried about inflation. Europe's Stock 600 index was down over 2% by lunchtime following the two rate hikes. Let's go! As an historic drought grips Southern California and water restrictions take effect, one water district is getting tough on usage violators by installing a device that reduces water supply at the source. We're in a drought emergency. The intent is not to be punitive. For David Peterson, the general manager of the Las Virginas Municipal Water District, it's a necessary intervention. So these flow restrictors are installed for customers who really are not paying attention to how they use water. And so the way this device will work when we put it in, it will actually allow the customer to still be able to use water inside their home, and that's water for cooking and bathing and cleaning and that kind of thing. But it will restrict the amount of water that they can use outdoors. In our area, outdoor water usage accounts for about 70% of all water usage. The flow restrictor device was developed on site by engineers, led by senior field customer representative, Kaysen Gilmer. This is the restrictor, it's pretty simple. It's just a disc with a hole in it. It's applied at the meter. And if you can imagine, our service line comes in to the beginning of the meter. Once the water passes through the meter, we will slide this restrictor in place in between the meter and the valve. And what it will do is this larger hole will then become a much smaller hole. After installation, the water flow is reduced from around 30 gallons per minute to just one gallon, enough to carry out household chores and personal hygiene, but not enough to operate sprinklers. Well, as you can imagine, there's, there's mixed reaction. Everybody uh, reacts a little bit differently, but actually it's been, um, it's been better than I would have expected. Calabasas homeowner Arthur Bender, who already replaced his lawn with drought-tolerant landscaping, is supportive. I think it's an outstanding idea. I don't really know how often it would be enforced, though the more the better. Uh, You know, I I certainly don't mind the idea of slapping somebody's wrist to get them to pay attention in class kind of thing. Since June 1st, the Metropolitan Water District has mandated some 6 million residents of Southern California to water their lawns and gardens no more than once a week. Last month, California Governor Gavin Newsom also warned he would order strict cutbacks on water usage statewide if businesses and residents did not slash their own consumption in the face of a severe drought. Top U.S. infectious disease expert Dr. Anthony Fauci, arguably the most prominent face of the government's efforts to contain the coronavirus pandemic, has tested positive for COVID-19. The National Institutes of Health said Fauci, who is chief medical advisor to President Joe Biden and the longtime director of the NIH, was experiencing mild symptoms and will self-isolate and continue to work from home. Fauci, who is 81, is fully vaccinated and twice boosted and has not recently been in close contact with Biden, according to the agency. He is the latest member of Biden's inner circle to come down with COVID in recent months. Cabinet officials, press officials, Biden's daughter, and even the vice president have tested positive. And earlier this week, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau 
fresh off a meeting with Biden at the Summit of the Americas, said that he had come down with COVID for the second time this year. Fauci, who has long cautioned people to be vigilant about the virus, said in late spring that the U.S. was out of the acute phase of the pandemic, but warned it is, quote, by no means over. Police in Brazil say a suspect has confessed to the killing of journalist Dom Phillips and indigenous expert Bruno Pereira. Investigators said Wednesday the suspect led police to a remote burial site where they unearthed human remains, marking a grim conclusion to a case that has sparked protests domestically and raised global alarm. Detective Eduardo Fontes told a news conference the suspect is a fisherman who had clashed with Pereira over his efforts to combat illegal fishing in indigenous territory. He added that another suspect in custody has denied any role in the murder, despite incriminating evidence, which officials are continuing to uncover at the site. Excavations have been carried out at the site and continue to be carried out. From now on, we move on to a new stage, the phase of identifying these human remains. Pereira was a former head of isolated and recently contacted tribes at a Brazilian indigenous affairs agency, and Phillips, a British freelance reporter who has written for The Guardian and The Washington Post, was doing research with Pereira for a book. They were working in a remote jungle area in the Amazon rainforest near the border with Colombia and Peru when they went missing. The region, also known as the Javari Valley, is home to the world's largest number of uncontacted indigenous people and has been invaded by illegal fishermen, hunters, loggers, miners and drug traffickers. Witnesses say Pereira had received threats from one of the suspects before. They also say the suspects were seen meeting in the area just moments after Phillips and Pereira passed by on June 5th. Public defenders representing the two suspects could not immediately be reached for comment. Police are investigating a third person's involvement, and further arrests are possible. Meanwhile, Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro, who has come under growing pressure to find Phillips and Pereira, and previously faced questioning by Phillips himself, suggested Wednesday the journalist had made enemies by writing about environmental issues. Three of the world's top tech firms lost an appeal against EU fines on Thursday. Europe's top court, the European Court of Justice, agreed with the EU's decision to fine Toshiba, Sony and Samsung, among others, for being part of a cartel. The European Commission accused the firms of colluding to procure tenders for optical disk drives. Those drives were for laptops and desktops made by Dell and Hewlett-Packard. The penalties were first handed down seven years ago, with five companies in total fined 116 million euros, or about 120 and a half million dollars. A joint venture between Toshiba and Samsung took the biggest hit at around 43 million dollars. Hitachi LG Data Storage was fined about 38 million dollars. Dutch firm Philips was not fined, as it told the EU competition enforcer about the cartel. Europe's second highest court, the General Court, had already thrown out the company's challenge in 2019. Though the European Court of Justice upheld the fines, judges did partly annul some of the EU's decision. It argued the Commission did not show the firms had taken part in separate infringements.